right, me and Shad have joined forces with this new collaborative t-shirt design. Support the defense of historical accuracy, click the link in the description below and get yours now. Use the code METASHAD for a 15% off, valid only in December. If you are new to this channel, I understand this TV series is a historically based work of fiction and not a documentary. If you enjoy it as is, more power to you. However, on this platform I review shows that take place in specific historical settings for entertainment and educational purposes. Thank you for your understanding and welcome. Hello Noble Ones, welcome back to my channel, this is The Metatron speaking and this is the second review of the second season of the TV series Barbarians on Netflix. Now on this review we're going to focus on the character Dido because yes, she deserves a full-on video. Of course I'm fully aware that I'm going to get some SHIT because of what I'm about to say, but if we don't defend the freedom of expression against a loud minority, am I right? Plus, this video is going to upset the work, which, in my book, is a bonus. Personally, I really don't like Dido as a character. I believe he's an extremely poorly written character. In fact, I am not the only one to feel that way, and over the course of this video, I am going to read some comments. Some I agree with, some I don't. But in general, if we peek very quickly at Rotten Tomato, we'll notice that there is a massive difference in user-generated score between Season 1 and Season 2 of Barbarians. And of course, if this tickles your curiosity and you want to know, and you start searching, you know, like reading blogs and reading articles and reading all sorts of comments, you will find the sort of comments that I was mentioning before. Oh, people don't like Dido? It's because they are racist. And because I know people will tell me, Metatron, you're just building a straw man. Well, there you go. This is just one of the hundreds of comments like this that I found which usually reply to people that say, I don't like this series because it's historically inaccurate. Just gonna read the beginning, but here is what they say. Unbelievable how many ignorant, racist people are out there. Stop using historical accuracy to justify keeping people of color from participating in full within today's entertainment industry. It's not a documentary, it's a fictional show. See, this is the problem with the cancel culture right now. They're not attacking people that are literally writing racist stuff. They're attacking people who just happen to not like the lack of historical accuracy on an historically based show which has nothing to do with racism. We understand it's not a documentary, and if the fact that it isn't historically accurate takes nothing away from the entertainment and the enjoyment you are getting from the show, good for you. But if you are someone who really likes history and were really excited to see a show set in ancient Rome with the Romans wearing accurate armor, but then the Romans are represented in such a stupid way, they lose battles they never lost, they're represented as absolute idiots, and you don't like that, that doesn't make you a racist. That is your freedom. If you think that Dido is a poorly written character, that doesn't make you a racist. And if we like historical accuracy in historically based movies, it is our right and that does not make us racist. And the fact that people like this have to resort to insulting and name-calling to attack people who simply have a different opinion than them, well, you know what that makes them? bigots. But since they don't have the mental ability to confront you on an intellectual level, they have to label you racist, homophobic, misogynist, and anything they can think of the moment you dare to disagree with their opinion. Let me show you what's wrong with Dido. Let's break it down and examine her properly. Name, Dido. Ethnic group, black. Origins, Carthaginian. Gender, woman. First and foremost, the name, Dido, which shows an extreme lack of originality on the part of the script writers. That is the exact same name as the legendary first queen of the city-state of Carthage, allegedly in 814 BC, at least according to the Greek legend. Giving her the name of the legendary founder of Carthage adds nothing to the character, muds the waters, and it really makes it feel as if that's the only name they ever heard when it comes to the Carthaginian culture, and they went with it. We 100% understand that they don't mean it to be the original Dido, they just want the character to be named after the original Dido, but it's silly sounding, particularly if you've studied the history of Carthage. It would be like creating a new Roman character and naming him Romulus. I think they should have done a little bit extra research on what actual very common Carthaginian names were in this specific time period. That would have made the character more believable. Ethnic group, black. Quite a few things to read on this one. Check this out. This person says, Carthaginians were not sub-Saharan Africans, they were originally Middle Eastern Phoenicians colonists that carved a sizable empire in the Mediterranean basin. Besides, North Africans didn't live with sub-Saharans, nor were aware of their existence since they were separated by a huge ocean of desolation and wasteland called the Sahara Desert. Add this to the show many historical inaccuracies and you get one of the worst sequels in the history of television series sequels. Listen, I know why you're mad, I understand you hate political correctness, I do too, but I also need to be intellectually honest and in this case, you are wrong. Historical truth is historical truth. I will destroy the idiot who calls everyone racist in a moment, but I do have to defend this point. 
Now, in this case, I don't actually have any problem with Dido looking black. That is because, even though it is true that the Carthaginians were mostly non-black, meaning Phoenicians, so that would be basically a Semitic people as far as we understand, and Berber, which is a light-skinned population which would be settled in northern Africa, so the Carthaginians in general would have looked from light-skinned to tanned to Middle Eastern, but it is also true and fully documented that a certain amount of Sub-Saharan Africans were living and did settle in Carthage. And the statement of this person saying that the Carthaginians weren't even aware of black Africans is incorrect. It is in fact a little silly to say that if you consider not only the Kingdom of Kush, which was a black kingdom and everyone was aware of them, but also the fact that black people are mentioned by the Romans. In fact, the ancient period sources on North Africa distinguish between the Gaetuli, whom are the light-skinned Berber population, and the Melano Gaetuli, who were described as Ethiopians. So black-skinned. So, did she have to absolutely be black? No, they could have chosen a light-skinned or a Middle Eastern-looking individual. But could it be possible for a Carthaginian to be black? Yes. Whenever I tackle these sort of topics, I know the people again start calling me racist and saying, no, you need to say that all Northern Africans, they were all black. That's wrong, that's not what the data says, so I'm not gonna say it. But one of the things that you do find on this channel is that I do tackle every elephant in the room. I don't care that people are gonna call me names. So, there is a massive elephant in the room here, let's address it. The reason why Netflix chose a black actress for this role is for representation. Now, do I have a problem with representation? I'll answer that one in a second. But the point I'm trying to draw is that what Netflix is doing, and what I think is pissing a lot of people off, is the fact that the way this should be is Hey, we want to create a Carthaginian character. What did Carthaginians look like? Well, there would have been Berber, Phoenicians, and there would also be some black Africans in that area too. Great, so we can choose from any of these ethnic groups. Yes, we can. This is how it should have been, but what's happening in our day and age is the very opposite. Hey, we are making this show. We need representation at all costs. So, can we have a black Germanic person? Uh, not likely. Can we have a black ancient Roman? Well, they existed, but the Romans are the evil guys on this show, so you can't do that. Oh, okay. What about a Carthaginian? What if we stick a Carthaginian in there? Can it be black? Uh, yeah, I mean, you can do it. Okay, great, then also make it a woman, because we need black woman representation. Great, we get two with one. Kill two birds with one stone. And they do that at the expenses of the credibility of the character, of the depth of the character, of the plausibility of the character. And if they do representation, then people will just say it's a great show. If they don't do representation, people will say it's a bad show. It seems like what the show actually is doesn't matter anymore. And there is a word for that. It's called bias. Does objective criticism on the actual script writing of a show matter anymore? That is what a lot of people have a problem with and that does not make them racist. And what makes this character even less believable is the fact that the show is set in Germania. So if the show again was set in Carthage, at least it would have been a little more believable, because you could ask, what is a black woman doing in, in Carthage? And you could answer that very easily. She is from freaking Carthage. But no, the show is set in Germania, so what the heck is a Carthaginian woman doing in Germania. And the reason is that they are trying to create this backstory of vengeance because the Romans, oh, I'll get into that, but the Romans destroyed Carthage, killed her family, killed her parents, and so she wants vengeance and she wants to kill the guy that did that, who is, who is Germanicus, whose name wouldn't be Germanicus at the time, but whatever, and she wants to kill him. Where is Germanicus? In Germania. So she's going to go. <laughs> Let me get this straight. This Carthaginian woman travelled to Germania on her own, settled there, eventually moves in with this one character that I hate, with the purpose of killing one of the Roman high commanders, together with Emperor Tiberius, whom is assembling and mobilising an earth-shattering amount of legions to go and submit the Germanic tribes to make them pay for what they have done to the Romans a few years prior. Literally, the Roman Empire is moving with all of its might and power to Germania, and that's where she goes, from Carthage, on her own. And this already kind of paints the picture, I think, of the absurdity of this character. But it doesn't stop there. Another problem about this character is that she is a time traveller. Or an immortal. I'll leave it up to you. See, what I told you before about her personal side quest, the fact that the you know, Germanicus killed her parents during the sack of Carthage. See, the problem is that the sack of Carthage happened in 146 BC, and this is set in, what, 10 AD? So unless she's like at least 160, that will to be able to remember that sack, unless she's at least 170 years old, that is impossible. Both her and Germanicus, in fact. 
Now we know that season 1 wasn't perfect when it came to historical accuracy, but to really push this character in, to push the representation of minorities, they have completely denaturated history. Why did they do that? Because they needed a reason for this Carthaginian woman to be in Germania. The Romans sacked Carthage, and I'm sure that their historical advisors told them, uh, oh no they didn't, because they quit. But they would have told them, and they would have told them, but sir, this happened 150 years prior. And they'd be like, well, let's pretend that Romans, since they're evil, they sacked Carthage again. Well, no, they didn't. They turned Carthage into a very profitable commercial hub. The city of Carthage becoming again one of the greatest cities in the Roman province of Africa. So whether the character is actually talking about the real historical sack of Carthage, which happened 150 years prior, or whether they are creating and coming up with new sacks that the Romans never did, it's stupid, because they're doing it because they needed to push this character from Carthage into Germania. And there you go, I can hear people typing in the comments saying, well, you hate representation because all you want is all white casts. Absolutely not. As I said multiple times on this platform, I have absolutely zero problems with representation. To me, a full black cast, full white cast makes absolutely no difference. But as my position is, and my subscribers already know, I think that if you want to show more minorities on screen, you need to do it right. You should tell us more about the history of said minorities, rather than putting them everywhere, no matter where you said your show, and no matter what sort of historical gymnastics you're going to need to justify a character, that it's either absolutely out of place and error. You are setting a show in ancient times? You want more black actors on screen? Great, tell us about African history, but no. Black Romans, black Anglo-Saxons, black Greeks, you know the drill. Green Martians, you say? Absolutely not. You've got to have a black Martian too. The fact that the character is black here, I have no problems with that. The only problem I have is the mental gymnastics that they had to go through in order to justify a character that is in the wrong time period, is in the wrong place and makes absolutely no sense. The problem I have is that in our day and age, no matter where or when you set your show, you have to have representation of everything. Every sexual orientation, every ethnicity, every minority, which makes things unrealistic and doesn't represent how ethnic distribution was in ancient time or whatever period you choose to represent. They constantly misrepresent the demographics of ancient kings kingdoms, which further makes understanding the real geopolitical conditions of specific territories in specific historical moments impossible. Now I get it, you're going to tell me, but if you want to learn all of these things, watch a freaking documentary, don't watch this TV series. But once a TV series is pushed as being based on historical events, I think you should at least try to follow them and make characters that are believable. And I can't help but be mildly annoyed if not irritated by Netflix pretending to care for minorities, posing as, oh, we want to be inclusive and, you know, because it's the right thing to do. No, you don't, because if you did, you would have made more shows that were actually set in Africa telling us about the real history and gods and myths and culture. But you don't care. And you know why I know? Because you were okay publishing this disgrace of a film. So Netflix, stop pretending to be the good guys here. So if you do belong to any of these minorities, Netflix and people doing this, they're not your friends. And the people who have a problem with these sort of productions are not your enemies. Given some of the comments were actually racist, but we need to learn to differentiate. Emperor Palpatine says, This show cannot be further from actual history. Everything in the second season is basically made up. No wonder all the actual historians they hired to assist with the show quit or were fired because they didn't want to bend history to fit whose ever agenda they were trying to push. Absolutely well said. Don't care about homosexuality in the show. It was pretty normal back then in Roman and Greek cultures. I agree. A girl from Carthage made no effing sense. She was there for the minority quota, I guess. Not racist. Ashley says, Further, one black woman, not even essential to the overall storyline, cast amidst this all-white cast and getting maybe 10 minutes of total screen time the entire season has caused certain people to lose their collective minds. Historical inaccuracies, it's an effing TV show, what did you expect? Let me tell you. He's saying this now. But if they make a TV series about Shaka Zulu and they cast an entirely white cast, then he's gonna say it's historically inaccurate. Also, it's possible her family were captives from another country, very typical, and she was born in Carthage. I don't know why he went with the captive part. She could have been born in Carthage. He's trying to defend it, but he's, he doesn't even know what he's talking about. If not, who cares? The people who like historical accuracy. 
Why does it matter? It doesn't have to matter to you. The show never claims to be historically accurate, just admit you are racist and homophobic. And go find a TV show that doesn't upset your delicate and narrow worldview. And there we go. Attack the person when you are not culturally and intellectually fit to attack the argument. Stop blaming so-called woke PC culture just because you've been forced to learn that not everything has to be all white all the time. You see what I mean? The moment you dare say, don't like something, that these people are trying to push, you get showered with insults and name calling. And then we are the ones with narrow worldview? Really? Now on Reddit someone said, Netflix Barbarians 2 went woke. Okay, this could have been an interesting post to read to see what people have to say. It just to kind of see what people, you know, from both sides of the spectrum, but of course the post was censored and closed up with the following comment. The moderator Abyss85 says, this post is locked now, I would like to make one thing clear. If you feel the need to complain about the perceived wokeness of the show, this is not the place for. A very important part of rule one of the subreddit is to be friendly and inclusive. It's interesting how Mr. Moderator Abyss85, who doesn't even know how to spell the word documentary, by the way, seems to think that being friendly and inclusive has to mean being woke. That is not the case. You can be friendly and you can be inclusive without being woke. So, no more comments here, but at least there are a few we can read. Let's check them out. Wonderful Meat 9 says, Are you brain dead? During the time of the Roman Empire, there were black people all the way up in England. That is correct, both from an osteological and archaeological standpoint. The Roman Empire was part in Africa. They had auxiliary troops made up of African units, which could become Roman citizens. That is also true, but that actually proves the point that they are not being accurate because they are showing absolutely zero black Romans on this show because they chose the Romans to be evil and so they are not going to do that. The only ahistorical part of this character is that she claimed to be from Carthage despite the Punic Wars happening 150 years before the series is set. Exactly. Pretty big one if you ask me. PJB333 says, It definitely isn't unrealistic, but they probably did force it in there. Exactly my point, thank you. The Night Slasher says, Wow, wow, racist, black Carthaginians, lol, okay, I bet you think Cleopatra was black too. The self-defeatism of speaking about historical accuracy is obviously lost on you. Keep spouting off your racism accusation while you spew progressive historical revisionism. I do understand this point. He's wrong, again, on the fact that he's laughing at black Carthaginians, because as we described, that's fine. And he's also making this specifically political, which I try not to do on this platform again. You can be left-winged, you can be right-winged. If you like history and you're against this, the bending of historical truth, you will be welcome here. It's your, your personal political position, it's your right and your freedom and I respect that. But yes, I do understand that he's pissed off at people calling everyone racist for no reason. I agree on that point, they shouldn't do that. And then again, the post was blocked, so nothing else we can read on it. But I think we read enough. These are the reasons why I don't like Dido as a character. And it's also why, once again, Netflix has shown their true colour. Fight for your freedom, stay smart, stay intelligent, stay free. Alright number ones, well I hope that you enjoyed this video, if you did please remember thumbs up and if you're not yet members of this community become a number one, subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. Thank you very much for watching and remember, the Metatron has spread its wings. Goodbye.